But Risky said something about a godfather. So it's obvious that there's a godfather somewhere that might maybe told him not to come. Come with everything. So he's, he's not saying, I don't want to assist the committee, I don't want to talk. He's saying because that person who should be here, who is not here, who has sent a lawyer to represent uh, he, he or she, that, that him too is not going to talk directly, that he's going to talk to his counsel. That's just all he's saying. Members of the correctional services, they are here. There are other people who are also here. Please, say after me. I. I, Biki Subuhari, do solemnly swear. Center on him. And I want to submit this way. That this investigation will have more meaningful impact when we have him on the ground before us. He said that immediately they saw that viral video. They set up a team to investigate what happened and all that. So what we are doing here, like our colleagues are saying, is we want justice. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Plan B TV News. So today, I want to give you guys the update. The Honorable House, Summer Bobriski, VDM, and DFCC, and the Controller General, all of them that were involved in that voice recorder link, so, you know, I posted a video on how VDM reacted. So, this is a full video on how the ruling played out. Though, they said Bobriski did not come. Again! I don't know why Pepsi go sue VDM, 1 billion. But at the end of the day, they will run from the 1 billion with this one. But I just want you guys to watch the full video. The video share along, but just watch it to the very end. We'll be right back to do some messages into it. Bobriski said something about the Godfather. So it's obvious that there's a godfather somewhere that might maybe told him not to come and then nothing will happen because he has disrespected everybody here by not coming and you are trying to force me to talk and you are already throwing a little threat that you detain me. I'll stay in the cell. This is not my first time. It's not my second time. So I'll go and stay there until he's ready. But for now, I will not say anything. If I say anything, let me die. It's okay. Um, uh, the Leonard Council. We, we have, have taken, taken to this committee, committee that the evidence I shall give to this committee shall be the truth, shall be the, truth, the, whole, truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me the Please sign and uh, Mr. Chairman, sir, with your kind permission, I will hand over the microphone to very dark man, sir. So see, please. So see. Please, can you reduce the volume? Uh, my lawyer will be the one to talk, and I will not say a word, because I will not want to walk out on the people that are old enough to be my father. So I won't say anything until Bobiski is here and the EFCC chairman is here. Thank you very much. By the rules of this business, the very fundamental rule that we have as a rule of practice here in Parliament is that when a witness is invited to testify, the witness can only leave the point of testimony upon being discharged by the chairman. And so with due respect to the first witness that has been called, I want to move with the chairman that the witness so-called, as it were, goes back to the point of testimony until he's discharged by this, the chairman of this hallowed committee. That is first. Then second, it is not the witness that sets the rule for parliament. Parliament has its, has its rule of practice. And so to that extent, it is from the chair that will determine the rules for this proceeding. 
So it's the chairman that can discharge a witness, it's the chairman that sets the rules. So to that extent, Mr. Chairman, may I move with respect a motion that the first witness has called to testify be sworn as it is the practice of parliament. And then we'll take it up from there, Mr. Chairman. This is serious business, and uh, this is not the first time we're having an investigative hearing. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I so move. I represent the Nigerians, especially the heartbeat of Lagos, which we solve. Mr. Chairman and the co-chairman and distinguished colleague, by virtue of Section 88, sub 1, sub B, this parliament has the power to invite anybody and investigate any person. Therefore, it is an aberration for a witness to come before us and say he will not say nothing. Mr. Chairman, in line with the previous speaker, and six, this sentence six that the witness return back to the witness box and give them the second. I hear by second. That um, Mr. Martin's visa return to the witness box and continue with uh, his presentations. If you are in support, may you say aye? aye. Those who are against, say nay. The eyes have it. Um, our, one of our guests is doing what he's doing. This is parliament. We are not acting outside the constitution that empowers us as a parliament. It is bound on him, as you have called him to that witness boss, to speak to us. Even adopting whatever he has been submitted, it also has to come from what he has said before adopting it. And also I want to add, um, for those who are yet to get there, it is your submission here that is final. What you say is final. And that should be abided by. If that is not taken, you can invoke the law of the house. Thank you so much. The witness is on oath. I think at this point, Mr. Chairman, I want to move a motion that the witness refusing to answer to the parliament decided as arms should be called to arrest and detain the witness because it's part of the powers you have to invoke. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Maybe he, will, he may want to talk to us because um, this is a parliament. We have our rules here. You made these uh, weighty allegations. You are supposed to lead this process. And um, I know that uh, you thought well before you came public to make these allegations. So what I am saying is that um, you are still there on the witness boss, and we expect you to address us. It is not your duty whether Bob Risky came here or not. That one concerns us. We also have our constitutional powers to subpoena him to come here. We have those powers. So you are not expected to dictate to us what we should do. So we expect you to talk to us, but where you refuse, we can invoke the constitutional powers we have here. Thank you. If the press will allow me, I'd like to make a few comments. Uh, maybe to guide the proceedings and also assist parties before this committee. I, I have a background as a lawyer. I practiced for over 14 years and I hold a doctorate degree in law. I also know that even in regular court sessions, the absence of the accused person's counsel or accused person himself does not stop the prosecution from continuing the course of his business. And parliament has, had issued 
bring notices to parties, and parties are before us. Whoever is not before us, it is the business of parliament to decide what to do, whether to issue a bench warrant from here or whatever it is. That is the business of the committee. The, in fact, the chairman of the committee, who sits, who presides over this session. And so I, I want to state here clearly, for avoidance of doubt, that in the event, in the event that the the gentleman who is here as a witness refuses to respect the fully constituted committee of the House sitting in its place as another mandate of the National Assembly, what she wants to be the relevant provisions of the Constitution, part of Parliament, uh, according to the justice of this case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Honorable Colleagues, Mr. Chair, Co Chairman. I think it's important to re emphasize for the witness to understand that the allegations that were made has caused this House to invite senior government officials that have come here. Members of the House of Reps are gathered here based on the allegations that were made. So I think it's important to emphasize that the witness needs to speak to these allegations that were on social media, to speak and let us understand how and why these allegations were made. You need to speak as a witness, as I've been invited, otherwise this House will exercise its powers as members have said. Senior government officials are here. The Correctional Service, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, they are all here. So it's important that you speak to these allegations that you made. Please. All right. Kelechi Wuku. Why we step in here today? The gentleman there has already been administered oath here and uh, we're elected by the people. We are not just here by our own. Our people mandated us to be here. And the House has directed that we must carry on with this investigation. We have investigated a lot of agencies, not just individuals. We are an institution like EFCC, prisons, have been mentioned. We can't sweep it under the carpet. It's like giving good uh, to look after, and the next thing somebody is telling you story. So, you are there already to testify. I will advise you go ahead, give your testimony. Nobody should mislead you. People voted for us to be here. The powers of this house cannot be taken for granted, and we will not allow it. You will step in here and tell 360 members of the House of Representatives that you're not going to say anything. If we do that, we've not set good principle for the parliament. So I want to beg you, the power will be on us to protect the citizens and institutions, which you're also one of them, and these institutions are here. So I will plead to you, to go ahead, nobody should deceive you. And I want to plead with your lawyer. You see, we invited him, not you. You've been raising your hand. We are in charge here. Here, we are in charge. And I just want you to know that. So, you should allow your client, for here, we invited him here. Allow your client to testify. This is not, if you feel whatever we've done here, you are not okay with it. You have other roots to also express your, who have roots to appeal. So I hereby second the motion moved by my colleague that the man should go ahead. Thank you. If he needs uh, the help of his lawyer to talk, let us allow you to say what you want to say. Let's hear you. Give him the microphone. 
uh, the agency is not here. The person does not respect this house. That's what he's saying. That, no, number two, number two. I'm going to, go, I'm going to, I'm just, I'm just reiterating what we have discussed. Number two, number two. He's saying that he has not said he's not going to speak. At least we came prepared. We came with almost everything that is needed by this committee here. We have even come with additional evidence that is not even available online. We have come with everything. So he's, he's not saying, I don't want to assist the committee. I don't want to talk. He's saying because that person who should be here, who is not here, who has sent a lawyer to represent uh, he, he or she, that, that him too is not going to talk directly, that he's going to talk to his counsel. That's just all he's saying and nothing more. In addition, um, I would like to say the man from my state, um, he said, uh, if I don't speak, they will, they will, they will, they will move a motion to detain me. I will not mind being detained until, I will not mind, oh God, let me, let, sorry, sorry, please. And also, in the, Bob Risky said something about a godfather. So it's obvious that there's a godfather somewhere that might, maybe told him not to come. And then uh, nothing will happen because he has disrespected everybody here by not coming. And you are trying to force me to talk. And you are already throwing a little threat that you detain me. I'll stay in the cell. And this is not my first time. It's not my second time. So I'll go and stay there until he's ready. But for now, I will not say anything. If I say anything, let me die. It's okay. Um, uh, the Leonard Council, we have taken care. It is on us to decide the next line of action, not on you. He has let us know that. You came here prepared. Uh, why don't you allow your client to make his speeches and adopt the documents here and submit it? Yeah. Because, let me tell you, excuse me, excuse me. Yes, excuse me. Order, please. We didn't come here to play. We did not come here to play. That Bobriski is not here, he is not the only person we invited. We invited EFCC, they are here. Members of the Correctional Services, they are here. There are other people who are also here. Even the prosecutor is here. The man you are accusing that withdrew the charges is here. It's not only Bob Risk. The same people that are accused of uh, collecting money and uh, moving, moving him from uh, the medium prison to elsewhere, they are also here. So it's not only Bob Risk that is here. We can take you people today, take uh, correctional, take EFCC. If Bob Risky did not arrive at the end of this section, we will also take a decision on it. So uh, I don't think uh, we should be begging or pleading with you people to take care of this, to talk on this. I don't think so. We, 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 we don't even want any legal representation here. Yeah. Your yeah, client is here. He is here, life and body. So this controversy don't need to arise at all. Yes. I see no reason why an adaptation of his documents both online and the additional ones which you have said you have brought cannot be made but to make a mockery of the house and say you will not speak and if you speak you will die it's not civil which I expect us all to be at this point we are not prosecuting him we are trying to find out and get to the root of this very heinous and grievous allegations made to state officials. So, um, my brother, his legal uh, uh, counsel, 
I, 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 I implore you to speak to your client to do the need for I'll move forward. Bob Risky, whether he, she, it is not here. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it is irrelevant. Because when he, she, whatever, is going to be spoken to, if he's not here, if he's not here, then we will handle that issue there. The Economic Crimes Commission is here. The Correctional Services are here. So let us move forward, my dear brother. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I yield. We should take this matter very seriously. And the young man there who made this revelation is trying to become sentimental. The house is being put to question. The house is being once again put to public domain and court. I will advise my colleagues. I have a minority view to whether we are arresting him or not. That Bobriski, who is the center of this matter, should be properly addressed so that we do not send a wrong signal. Already Bobriski is, is claiming to be untouchable. He's claiming, he's claiming to be untouchable. He has put the EFCC in bad light. He has put the coercive services in very bad light. And this young man, even though his uh, his speech is very, very, is unbecoming. I do not support the way you have spoken here. But let this young man not use us to shine. We must do the proper thing. But Brisky should be addressed, issues should be addressed properly. If the man says, I talked about Bob Risky, and the Bob Risky is not here, please, I want him to be here so that you hear what I will say. Bob Risky should be brought here. Please, my dear colleagues, let's not... I'm saying as a caution, if you want me to move it, it, it will be... If it is a motion, I thereby move that Bob Risky. Okay, if we are not there. Yet. Honorable, we have noted what you have said. Order, order, please. Order, please. We have noted what you have you have said. Nobody amongst us here. He's saying that because Bob Risky did not come here today, that she will, he, he or she will not come here. What we are saying is that we are not there yet. We have our order here. When it gets to him and he is not here, we will also deal with that. So that is what we are saying. So, um, cancel, cancel. Yes, can you confirm with me? I speak, let me die. I will not die again. So, I will just go on to... Now, um, in the video I posted online, I explained everything for the people that saw the video, it was well detailed and well explained. Um, how I got hold of that um, recording is as a result of Bob Risky blackmailing somebody he owes money. So according to the story and according to the evidence that a proof of chat that was sent to me, um, the person borrowed Bob Risky 4 million era when Bob Risky was in the EFCC detention, or rather, in the private apartment lodge. Um, the person gave him the money on the... Sorry, excuse me. On the 19th, 6, 2024. 
The person gave him the money, 4 million naira. It was transferred to this account number 0496411279. Abiola Okuneye, and as you know, Bobriski's name is Okuneye, so apparently, Kuda, Kuda, Kuda Bank. So um, apparently, it's his brother's account. So when it was time to get the money back, according to the story the guy told me and the evidence I saw, he told Bobriski he needed to. He wanted that money to complete his building in Lagos. So that was why I borrowed him the money. It was now time to pay. From the receipt I have here, he sent him a message. Bobriski refused to respond. Sent him another one after like a few days. Bobriski also refused to respond. When Bobriski eventually responded, Bobriski said, um, I'm going to give you the money in, I think, September. So September 1st, the guy reached out to Bobriski again. Bobriski refused. And the next thing that followed it was blackmail. He said, um, I will tell them that you are smooshing me and you are kissing me. So the guy felt very, very somehow because felt like he was not going to get his money. God so kind, there's a very dark man that has the platform to call out the people that owes money and they will pay. So a friend of mine who is very popular contacted me and he said, VDA, see what's going on. And I said, okay, no problem. If you have received, send it. Then um, when he sent it, now I'll say something here. When he when sent he it, it, immediately I made a video, a first video, and I said, Bob Risky, I'm giving you four hours to pay back. Then he started begging the guy. Now, what I'm going to say now, my lawyer does not even know. Now, he started begging the guy. Then he paid. Immediately, he paid. But when I listened to the audio, I said, nah, even though you paid, this has to go out there, man. Because EFCC cannot go around harassing some boys, young boys, and somebody with a godfather will be pulling stones. I was detained in the prison. My very good friend, Sean Kuti, was detained as well. A lot of boys are inside the prison. Bobinski is not any way better than them. So I didn't see any reason why I should keep the audio. I kept the receipt of his payment, which he paid that day. He paid that day. So immediately I got it, I just smiled. So he was actually guilty. But here's the thing. But Brisky didn't know that this guy recorded everything. But because Bob Brisky, obviously I have the platform, yeah? He understands how I roll. So he quickly paid, but I said, no, it has to go there. Now, I need to clarify something about um, Femi Falano and um, the Falano Chambers. Because apparently right now some people are taking advantage of um, what is going on to target um, Femi Falano. And um, I would like to still say here now that um, I apologize to him for the dent on his name. But however, it's so sad that his name was inside that audio. I could not believe it as well. That was why I, that was the part that even irritated me more, which I said I refuse to believe that it will be part and party to something like that, that would make people take somebody out of prison and to get a pardon. So, um, yeah, I have the recording. I have one part. I can't give you guys the whole part because I don't know if Bobiski Godfather is here to collect everything. So I'll give you one part of it. Then maybe when another time, I can give you the complete audio. Furthermore, if he denies that one, I have another one that he does not even know about. So, so I am very, very ready. The reason why I wanted him to be here, I wanted to be looking directly into his eyes so that he will understand that Nigeria is not for the Godfathers. Yes, Nigeria is not for the Godfathers. I will not allow corruption. If I see a secret about you, Oga, I will tell. Oga, even you that say you prove me outside, inside, I will tell, especially you, I will tell. I will make sure everybody knows. And I'm being very, very honest. I will not fear anything. I'll put it out there because Nigeria has gone down. Now, I will implore you people to actually do the right thing because the judiciary system is messed up so bad. It's messed up so bad. You people have to save your face. I believe a lot of APC members are here. So you people need to save yourself. It's okay. It's okay. Can we... Hello? The clerk. Can you tender it to the clerk? You...
All right, so I will state the things I'll be giving. Okay. So I'm giving him the flash that contains the first audio recording of about 5 minutes 36 seconds. And then I'm giving him the first receipt for transaction the guy made to Bob Risky. Also, some part of the charts. And then the return of the money, which was on the on Tuesday, September 24th, on Tuesday, just few six days ago, I think. Then um, the charts acknowledging when he wants to, when he was disturbing the guy that he wants to refund immediately after I saw my video. And then um, yes, the charts and the charts where he blackmailed the guy. There's a particular place where he blackmailed the guy. Um, the charts also asking for the money. As a reminder, we even like to read one part for September 4th. He said, Dear Bobriski, this is a reminder for the return of the loan amount of 4 million naira as agreed. The due date for the return is September 1st. Mind you, this September 1st, it was Bobriski that gave him the dates. Then he said, Kindly use the attachment account details to send the refund. Then he sent his account number. So because he didn't get it, he came to me. So I'll read the part of the blackmail that made him. Because yes, I'd like to clarify that the guy said he's not gay. I don't know, I don't live with him, but he has kids. So he said he's not gay. Okay, so this part, um, after requesting... Sorry. Okay, I'll still bring more parts. So this part, the guy went on saying things like, I helped you when you needed help. When it's time to pay me back, you have been stressing me, this is not fair. How will you pay me like this? Then Bobiski went on to say, when you kiss me and smoosh me, did you give me any money? Are you mad? Your visit to Nigeria that you kissed me in Lagos, did you give me anything? I didn't ask you for money. No, because I am fucking okay. If not EFCC, you think I'm going to ask you for money? Does that mean it's because of EFCC is asking for the money? <laughs> Uh, so if not EFCC, um, do you think I'm going to ask you for money? You are typing all this message to someone, help you post flyers without collecting, collecting anything from you. Wow. Go ahead and call me out. I will respond to you on IG. You know I am shameless and I don't care. You will get your money. I have your account. I don't want to look like someone that is ungrateful. But threatening me that you give me 24 hours is the height of it. I am waiting for you to post or call me out. So apparently the guy told him he was going to tell me. So these are the evidence I'm going to present for now. Add additionally, after this, there's a second one and there's a third one, of course. Okay. Um, and I'll give you everything. Thank you. Um, uh, dear colleagues, uh, do you have any... I'm from Lagos State, the Center of Excellence. Honestly, I can't believe I'm sitting in this house because of, uh, as an individual, I'm speaking as an individual now, because of a Bob Risky or a very dark man. Because this house has very, very important things to do. In fact, a lot of us have like three, four meetings holding somewhere else that we are supposed to be attending. But we are here because of our institutions that have been mentioned in the matter. And then we have somebody come here that say that he will die if he has to speak. And you have finally spoken. Hello. You have finally, you have finally spoken, and we are happy that you have spoken. Before now, we are supposed to have had all the necessary documents, even before we came here. I called the clerk now to ask him that what documents do we as committee members have to work with before we even came here in the first place? We don't have any documents here to work with, and we are just collecting the documents here now. This is very, very untidy. And our institutions that are here, we need them to defend themselves. There are a lot of fake news in the air. And I'm also aware that publicity has sued for a billion naira, claiming that the voice note is AI generated. Whatever it is, we don't have by the, um, the, the publicity lawyer that is here. What is the reason why publicity is not here? Is there any serious reason why he or she is not here? Is he sick or what? So we need to know. So please, I, I want to appeal, I want to appeal that the aspects that concerns our institutions should be addressed. Let us know where we are going. We have very serious matters to attend to. Thank you very much. 
Mr. Mr. Martins. Martins. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I had I listened to you, you though you, you didn't, didn't die, die after, after you spoke. You spoke. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> And I pray you will not die. Amen. And such negative things will not come out from your mouth again. Amen. Uh, while you were speaking, I was listening keenly. I was trying to ask myself, where is that evidence that is really connecting the security agencies or this institution? Because from your narration, I discovered that it's just a mention of, oh, this said this and that said this. Though I, at the final stage, you said um, that you have second phase, third phase, probably fourth uh, phase document to submit. I really want you to establish for us the connection that brought about this corruption that was highly mentioned, especially at the EFCC and that of the Correctional Center. That is where the book question is. And also, I was said here, let me tell you, if some of these things is not clarified, they might think also that they have bribed us to the lawmakers. And this will not be taken lightly because for some of us that said there, we are here to defend our country and this honorable institution. So I really need you to throw light to tell us what is the connection these two agencies. I really want to know what is really your evidence to that, to some of those things that have been asked. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. So this question is supposed to be for Bobrisky. He was the one that used his own mouth. He has the experience. He went to the prison. He was the one that moved. He was the one that said they took him to a special prison. It is not me. You can't ask me that. I'm sorry, sir. So um, the evidence, you can get it. I'll break it down. The account number he used when he was in detention, because according to him, he said it here, if not for EFCC, meaning his own main account was maybe frozen, so he used the brother's account. So the account should be investigated. All the money that went in and went out of it should be investigated to actually get the evidence that you need. Also, why this is actually believable for me, there was money laundering charges, everybody knows. From nowhere, no more money laundering charges. We have tendered it and we have accepted it. It is our duty to investigate to the letter of these allegations. Even we will involve even the network providers. I can assure you that we will get to the root. The issue of whether he was detained in the uh, 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 medium or maximum, we are also going to listen to these people here today. So, so let, let us, us not rush, rush some of these things. If we have any other person who wants to ask questions to him, so that let him take his questions, we can bring the next people to this place. Foremost, my name is Dr. Patrick Gomo. I moved that motion for this investigation to be carried out. Now, the investigative hearing is premised on the fact that there are two principal institutions created by acts of parliament. The first is the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and the second is the Nigerian Correctional Service. And as an institution of parliament, we have a duty to protect the image of our country. And it is just not enough. It is not just enough for us to fold our arms and watch either the veracity of what is said or the propaganda against our institutions. And so it is this kind of investigative hearing that will expose the, the veracity, the correctness or otherwise, of what is on ground. As a parliament, we are not here because of Bob Risky or Very Dark Man. We are here because two principal institutions of the Federal Republic of Nigeria are affected, and that is the EFCC and the Correctional Service. And again, this is not to prejudice whatever investigations we are going to do. This is also to send a signal to the media community because we are in very rough times that mere statements made against institutions such as the EFCC or the Nigerian Correctional Service can bring down the country. Whatever this means, this is the point to go with. If we allow mere propaganda 
to thrive without having this kind of investigative hearing, then we're in trouble in our country. And so this is why we have this investigative hearing. It is not about white, uh, it is not about very dark man or Bob Risky. We are not interested in your private affairs. And again, like I said, not to prejudice whatever investigations we are carrying out. Uh, your, my learned friend knows, and many other lawyers who are here know, that he who has said, the onus is on him to prove. So that is the weight of the evidence. If when you are said, you must prove. Because you are the one who has brought this to the fore. That's one. And then two, my learned friend also knows that a prosecution in regular court cases can amend charges, can withdraw, can drop charges. In fact, that is why it is in law allowed for even the Attorney General to, to enter and only prosecute. So that's the law. So we, we are not there yet, but I'm just, that's why I said I don't want to say this to prejudice anything. But then be that as it may, be that as it may, gentlemen, please, I am protected by the chairman. Be, be that as it may, be that as it may, you have evidence to tender. You should have the confidence of parliament. Most of us who are here, listen, most of us who are here are here because we are representing the conscience, the collective conscience of Nigerians. And for most of us to spend time to sit down and participate in this hearing, we are interested in this country. Now, when you tender documents in part, you are not helping this investigation. But if you tender your documents properly and in full, we will mark them accordingly and then take, your, the, the, take uh, the other parties or the other witnesses we will call accordingly. And you help us in our investigation. If you tender in part, your lawyer knows you are not helping this investigation. And then you have no discretion as far as tendering of documents is concerned. Counsel, please, I, I'm, I'm talking. You don't confuse him. You don't have discretion whatsoever before Parliament to choose, to pick and choose what documents to tender. We will foreclose you if you cannot tender all your documents and move to call the next witness. Thank you very much. Okay. But Prisky have said that it is AI. They have sold you one billion. I know that. Do you understand? They are already calling it AI. Now, the good part I have proves that it's not AI. You see the point? I know why I did that. You understand? Because if she is concluding that like she was sounding as if she's Bobrisky's lawyer, saying Bobrisky have said it's AI. He sold you one billion. Do you understand? So this is why I would not tender it. This house. And to respect this house, you must not ridicule or make a caricature of any of its members. And I want you to withdraw the statement on addressing Honorable Kafilat Akbara, how she speaks and all of that. It is very disrespectful and that is not good. And you should withdraw that statement. That on the side. Mr. Chairman, a lot of speakers have spoken. And that this investigation is not about very dark man or Bob Risky. That's true. In as much as you cannot take them out of it because they are the uh, principal actors. What I want us to understand principally is there was an allegation. And that allegation stemmed from that phone recording. So whatever we do here, whatever we do here, if we don't listen to that recording, I think we are leaving the crux of the matter. So I urge us to allow the media to play that recording for us to listen to. And then from there we take on, on what we need to do. I so move, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Very dark man, uh, Mr. Mattis. Can you withdraw uh, and the other one against uh, uh, Honorable Kafilat? Can you withdraw it so that uh, we can proceed? Can you put on your microphone? I withdraw the statements made to our elder statesman from Edo State. I'm very sorry, sir. And Mama, I'm also very, very sorry, and I withdraw it. Thank you very much. So that I don't think there is a different audio he has. And he has submitted it. Hello? A different audio, but there is more to the audio. So I gave you... What I actually brought here, I'm not sure if I brought the complete one, but what I have here is what you have heard. It's actually an 11 minutes, over 11 minutes audio, where I broke it down and posted the half, and then there's another one. So, um, but 
Yes, yes, but it portrays the same thing, but at least it's, it's, it's a better proof. It's wittier, wittier. 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 It's wittier. Okay, okay um, who is the next person? person. Um, in, in, in absence, absence of, of uh, Mr. Okunaya uh, Idris, uh, or Larry, please, please say after me. I. I, Bikis Buhari, do solemnly swear that the evidence I shall give to this committee shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Honorable Chairman, sir, and honorable members of the committee, standing on all existing protocol. Sir, the special duty legal of the Lagos Directorate received the case file of Idris Okune, a.k.a. Bobriski, on the 4th of April, 2024. After the receipt of the case file, my team sat down to come up with the case plan and proceed with the case. That in the course of carrying out its man, um, the commission in a bid to cop the, mutil the mutilation and narrow abuse, set up a task, special task force to look into this offense. And Bobriski was apprehended in the course of that. Sir, in the case file, the statement of the ex-convict confessed inter earlier that Bob Express is not registered with SCUMO, that the special control unit against money laundering because I'm not aware of it. Ignorance of the law is not an excuse, which informed our decision to charge him for not rendering returns contrary to the, school, the Money Laundering Act, Section 6.1, and punishable under Section 19 of the same Act. However, on the 5th of April, 2024, we moved a motion for the Honorable Court to hear the matter because it was a vacation matter, and we were granted leave to proceed with trial. Notwithstanding the unequivocal confession of the ex-convict, convicting the essential ingredients in counts five and six of the charge, and having indicated willingness to plead guilty to counts one and four of the charge, which has to do with mutilating of the Naira currency, the prosecution in total fidelity and conduct its oath and strict adherence to professional practice of not only disclosing exculpatory documents to defense, having received a report from, of investigation activities from SCUMO, which showed that Bob Express is not a designated non-financial business and profession, decided to drop counts five and six of the charge in the interest of justice and fair hearing without any inducement or prompting of any sort from the defense, and in line with the mandate of the Special Task Force against Nera abuse, we attached the response from SCUMO. We also attached the charge showing counts one to six. There was no amendment of charge. The dropping of counts five and six was done in court because the ex-convict elected to plead guilty to counts one and four, which had to do with narrow abuse. In any event, Sections five, oh, sorry, counts five and six, which had to do with not rendering returns to SCUMO, showed that it was not the Bob Express which he used to trade is not a designated non-financial business and profession. That's what informed our decision to drop counts five and six in court. An amendment of charges is not alien to practice, particularly sections 216 of Act 2015. It, was, it is also noteworthy that the alteration made by the, country, by the prosecution did not contravene any provision of extant policies of the commission and its, standard in, and its standard operating procedures. We have amended charges severally in court when the need arises. That the steps taken by the prosecution in this proceeding, dropping in the proceedings, 
dropping count five and six, which is akin to amendment of the charges, can take place at any time before judgment, is not alien as the Commission has in numerous instances had cause to amend, add or subtract from the body of the counts of the charge preferred against defendants, and this will not be the last. We attached record, records of proceedings of the court showing how we arranged the defendant in court. The Honorable... To show that the ex-convict was... There was no cohort between the prosecution and defense, the ex-convict even appealed the judgment of the court. If there was any interaction or any agreement, he would have gotten what he wanted and he couldn't have appealed. We also have the notice of appeal by the ex-convict attached to our documents. We also attached a copy of the charge, the record of proceedings, and the memo setting up the special task force that investigated the case of the ex-convict. So I want to state categorically that there was no form of financial inducement to any member of the commission, especially the prosecution team in respect of this matter. All we did was we carried out our duty in, as regards to our core values of professionalism and the ethics that I took as a legal practitioner to prosecute and not persecute anybody. We are most grateful. Are you done? When we were analyzing the case file to prepare our charges, the purpose of the charges in the first place was to charge for Naira abuse and mutilation of Naira currency. But then the defendant confessed that Bob Express, we attached his statement wherein he proffered this um, confession. Let me read. Bob, Bob Express is not registered with SCUMO, Special Control Unit Against Money Laundering. And knowing that we can convict on a confessional statement, we went ahead to include counts five and six in the charge. But when he elected to plead guilty in court in the morning, and having at the back of our mind that we rest, um, response from the special control unit against money laundering, saying that the Bob Express that we're charging for not rendering returns is not qualified to be a designated non-financial business and professional as provided under the money laundering act. Is it, Is it clear, clear now? now? Okay. okay. Do we have, we have any other, other person? person? Okay. okay. Um, um, Mr. Mr. Rotimi Oyedipo, uh, I, I think there's a bit of a miss up here. Uh, Rotimi Oyedipo isn't the prosecutor who handled this case in court. Uh, the prosecutor is here. Uh, Belukisu, yes. Not Rotimi Oyedipo. So she, if the uh, committee wants her to make a presentation, she's here. But not Rotimi Oyedipo. She was not the one. And, but I would like to also... Yes, the prosecutor is here in court. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. charging for six counts, but she has explained why they, uh, uh, they, they had to drop the money laundering uh, charge. So, so, on, on that, that note, note uh, dear, dear colleagues, the day, day is uh, fast spent. Uh, I, I want, want um, one, one of us to move, move that, that we adjourn. Okay. Okay, okay. 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 The chairman uh, and the co chair of uh, the joint committee for the investigation of this disturbing allegation of corruption against the EFCC uh, and other gov uh, government agencies. I stand here today, my name is Michael Ezekwe, the Chief of Staff to the Executive Chairman. I stand to represent him. He sends in his uh, sincere apologies for not being here uh, due to the exigencies of uh, duty that came calling, though he would have wished to be here. Uh, the letter of investigation into this uh, uh, very deep and disturbing allegation 
uh, we would like to just make this presentation on behalf of the executive chairman very quickly. Our attention was drawn to the viral video published by one Martins, Vincent Ute, a.k.a. Very Dark Man VDM, wherein it reads Olaru Waju, Okeneya, a.k.a. Bob Risky, and S. Convicts, alleged that the officials of the commission received the sum of 15 million naira to drop money laundering counts in charge uh, FRUN versus Okunde Idris Olarowaju. In the same video, the publisher, uh, the very dark man, revealed that Bob Risky made this presentation to an undisclosed friend of his, whom he intended to receive a financial support from. Attached here is a copy of the charge we have marked as enclosure one. Given the gravity of the offense, which touches on our core value as a commission, it touches seriously on our core value, and we do not take uh, kindly uh, to the integrity of the commission, one of the best all over the world and in Africa, uh, for our integrity to be touched. Given the, this value of integrity, courage, professionalism, and collaboration, the executive chairman promptly constituted a team to investigate the claim and equally issued a statement through his various social media accounts to that effect. While his investigation is still ongoing, the executive chairman received from this honorable house an invitation directing his appearance and the concerned officers of the commission before this honorable committee for an investigative hearing. Upon close scrutiny and analysis of that video that gave rise to this investigative hearing, the commission observed the following. That the published and widely circulated video contained a private conversation between the ex convict and a yet-to-be-identified individual who, in an attempt to obtain monetary benefit, alleged that the, alleged the compromises and the compromise of the officers of the commission, the Nigerian Correctional Service, a private legal practitioner, Femi Falana, SAN, and a private and a false, the bad guy. That in an attempt to induce and convince the yet-to-be-identified individual into parting with his money, the ex convict alleged that the sum of 15 million naira was demanded by the officers of the commission to drop the count of money laundering counts in count five and six of the charge sheet and that he could not transfer the said sum from his account because of the investigation, thereby inferring that the said account was frozen. That at the time he was demanding for this money, and claim his accounts were frozen or under investigation, the commission never, at no time in the course of investigation, placed the account of the ex convicts under personal debit. His account was never frozen throughout the period of investigation. Whereas the ex convict mentioned the names of his friends who raised various sums of money and credited him to the account of his brother. The names of the officers of the commission that allegedly collected the bribe were not disclosed by the ex convicts. Also, the mode, the place, date, and time of the delivery of the alleged bribe, or to an account where it was paid, was not disclosed by the ex convicts. Arising from the above observation, the commission wishes to state categorically as follows. In view of the prevalent nature of the currency, mutilation and abuse of the Naira, which has been expressly criminalized by Section 21 of the CBN Act 2027, the commission in a bid to cop the said offenses and in the discharge of its statutory duty, set up a special tax force via a memo by the executive chairman to all his directorates. Now, attached here, which is also a copy of the said memo marked as enclosure two. As a result of the setting up of this special tax force and the vigorous sensitization, investigation, and prosecution, a number of convicts 
were, a number of convictions were secure, which has significantly stemmed this dangerous tide of abuse of the Naira. I mean, to which all Nigerians I witnessed today. It was in the course of carrying out its mandate that the Special Task Force of the Commission, Lagos Directorate, received intelligence which revealed that which revealed four different videos of gross abuse of the Naira notes perpetrated by the ex-convict, which warranted his investigation and prosecution. That on the 3rd of April 2024, the ex-convict, while undergoing investigation, in his extrajudicial statement, confessed clearly inter alia, Bob Express is not registered as Kumo, Special Control Unit Against Money Laundry, I'm not aware. Hence the inclusion of count five and six. Due to his own confession that Bob Express is not registered. So the prosecutors had to now include all of this and then did a further check on that. Now, in the body of the charge, this was included. Where the defendant now as convict was alleged to have failed to submit to SCUMO a declaration of his activity, which is contrary to Section 6.1 of the Money Laundering Prevention and Prohibition Act 2022, and punishable under Section 19 of the same act, in addition to the substantive offense of tampering with the Naira note as contained in Count 4, for Count 1 to 4. However, on the 5th of April 2024, notwithstanding the unequivocal confession of the ex convict admitting the essential ingredients of in count five and six of the charge, and having indicated willingness to plead guilty to count one and four of the charge, the prosecution, in total fidelity and candor to his oath and strict adherence to professional practice of not disclosing documents to their defense, Having received a report of the investigation and activities from SCUMO, which showed that Bob Express is not a designated non-financial business and profession, decided to drop counts five and six of the charge in the interest of justice and fair hearing, without any inducement or prompting of any sort from the defense, and in line with the memorandum of the special, with the mandates of the Special Tax Force Against Naira Abuse. We, we have this also attached here and marked as an issue three. That the Honorable House is invited to note that alteration, amendment, addition of charges is known to law. Very known to law. Particularly Section 216 of the Administration of Criminal Justice Act 2015. It's also noteworthy to note that it, it is also not what he here to note that the alteration made by the prosecution did not contravene any provision of the Eastern policies of the commission nor a standard operating procedure. That in the steps taken by the prosecution in proceeding to drop count five and six, which is akin to amendment of the charges, can take place at any time before judgment is, is not alien, is not alien as the commission has in numerous instances caused charges to be amended. You can see our attachment as enclosure four. The Honorable House is urged to use this to use this constitutional power to ensure that corruption and other vices are exposed, investigated, prosecuted, and also ensure that patriotic and dedicated officers are not blackmailed, demonized, and demoralized for faithfully serving and carrying out their lawful duties. That the commission has been consistent in its advocacy, calling on all public with credible information on any alleged act of corruption involving any of his staff to come forward with evidence. This, the public is urged to do responsibly. Short of the ex-convicts and other accusers openly naming the officers of the commission to whom they alleged gave the bribe of 15 million naira in order to induce and influence the dropping of count five and six of the charge bordering on money laundering, it is reasonable to infer that the ex-convict merely made up the story to convince the yet-to-be-identified person he was speaking with in order to obtain financial favor under the pretense by dropping the name of the commission. We wish to draw the attention of the, of the Honorable House to the fact that the onus of proving these grievous allegations against officers of the commission rests squarely on the accusers in this case, the ex-convict and the very dark man. 
It is noteworthy that the commission extends an invitation to the ex-convict and the very dark man to come and assist the commission in unraveling the identities of the officers of the commission to whom the alleged bribe of the sum of 50 million naira was paid. Regrettably, up to this moment, none of them have honored the invitation. While appreciating the seriousness attached to this incident and the noble steps taken by this honorable house to unravel the truth contained in this allegation in the viral video for the sanctity of the institution and the nation Nigeria, the commission wishes to assure this honorable house and the general public that, our, that on our part, we are committed to getting to the root of this matter and appropriate actions will be taken accordingly. In conclusion, the commission is appealing to the general public to desist from attaching parochial sentiment and unfounded assumption to actions taken by patriotic and dedicated officers in the course of discharging their duties in the interest of the nation. Accept the assurances of the executive chairman's highest regards. Thank you. We were already at a close section um, towards the point for chairman of this committee to make summary before this was submission. I, I would have loved if this submission had come before even the, the prosecutor. Maybe at its may. Like you already know, we are all here to make sure that justice is served. Secondly, we are all here to make sure that our institutions that are trying their best to put this country in a better shape, just like Mr. President have assured us of the New Hope agenda that we are all in, to make sure that these things go on well. That's why we are all seated here. Thirdly, for me, as a member of this committee, I've already made my submission to chairman. Some of these um, whole allegations and whatever have been said today is centered on one person, and that is uh, Mr. Okunaya. I don't want to mention the other one people are mentioning. Is he? I don't know him. <laughs> Even what is written here is he. So I am going by what? I, see, I think you are looking for. I will send you back to Abby. So he sent her on him. And I want to submit this way that this investigation will have more meaningful impact when we have him on the ground before us. Secondly, to have the alleged person. Who is in that tomb of that conversation that they were all communicating together on the floor? With all these people, then we'll be able to really see what is really happening so that they can look into our face and say, This Mr. A was whom this was given to, Mr. B, this was given to. So I will want you to also have yourself relaxed in terms of those issues of dropping count charges or not. It's also on that same Mr. Idris, to authenticate, we have heard from every quarter. So, Mr. Chairman, I want to submit that we adjourn to have Mr. Idris on ground, and then with the other counterpart whom they discuss with, we already have um, uh, uh, Vincent on ground, we have already, all the submissions have been made, so that it will help us to get to the root of this, and they will nip it at board. Thank you. When Oga was talking, um, he read from his paper. So one thing I know about investigation and when it comes to cases, um, when there's a suspect, the suspect will be assigned an IPO. The IPO is the one that investigates the case and then makes a report. Now, now what I'm saying is it, it is possible that the IPO was the one that actually received. Now, in order to know this, the account number that he used to collect money from, the person that reported to me, is a good bank account and his brother's account. That account number needs to be investigated. The money that came into it, the money that left it. Not just that, the money that was withdrawn, because sometimes, with the show of his and sometimes, and we know if you transfer money to them, they don't agree, right? So, 
It's possible that they withdrew money via POS or they withdrew cash and they pay. So the people that should be there, sorry to have not enough suggest, the person who I think should be there are the direct IP moles that reported to their organs on everything. That's what I think. Thank you, sir. We are going to be we are going to do justice. I want to ask you something, sir. Are you under suspension? No, that I was giving to me to that effect. Are you under suspension? Yes. There was a press release yes. by the National Day and News that I and my colleague in Vice Bomb and some others yes. have been suspended. Were you giving reasons for your suspension? No reason was given. No reason. So we just have you a letter and tell you to go home. They didn't have a letter. Sir. Are you in, are you are you on suspension? You said yes. In social media suspension. If I if I if I that was based on the confession of the same uh, whether they said if you can get money today and transfer to uh, this point. At this point, you stress it to that point, you stress it to the final point. Even if it is withdrawn cash, you will also know that it is uh, withdrawn cash. So, um, uh, Chairman EFCC, who is represented here, you should take note of that. We are taking note too. We, we, we have powers to scrutinize those accounts. And you can be sure, like I said earlier, that we are going to press this uh, 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 the movement of this morning to the final destination. That is one. Secondly, there is a person who uh, actually recorded that video, that audio. In our next sitting, it should be here. We need that person who did that recording. We need to have his number, the number that was called, and uh, the number that called the number. Uh, this time around, phone numbers are registered. We'll be sure that the number that made the call belongs to Obriski. We'll also be sure that the number that received the call is here. Uh, we'll also uh, approach the network providers uh, for us to be sure that it is not officially uh, generated. So, um, having said that, having said that, to, to the man in charge of uh, our correctional facilities, if you have listened carefully to what uh, the man who is representing the chairman said, he said that immediately they saw that viral video. They set up a team to investigate uh, what happened and all that. So I don't know if you set up a team or if it is based on the team you set up that you arrive at the suspension of two of your uh, colleagues, the man in charge of uh, the medium and the man in charge of uh, the maximum. Both of them uh, were suspended. So I also don't know if you have set up a team, you have your own internal disciplinary mechanism of how to know whether these things are true or not. So what we are doing here, like our colleagues are saying, is we want justice. If these people did not commit anything and you suspend them, you have not also served justice. And if you have suspended them, invariably, what it means is that you are uh, confirming the allegations. You are confirming that uh, these people actually took money and uh, took these people to this and that. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that we have to look at this whole thing critically and be able to come up, come up with the real truth in this matter. So on that note, I will uh, invite our colleagues to move that we are John. You have watched the video. You heard what VDM said. You heard what the controller said. He said, now, nah, 
for social media, they for suspend that, they not suspend that for for real life. Still doing his job and he still holds his position while the investigation is still going on. They only suspect that for the eyes of the people for social media. You heard what the ESCC said. The ESCC triumph. Corner, 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 every matter. Say, the reason we remove the money laundry case is this, is that, is that. We just remove it because after we try to submit it to the court, they said we lack merit. There's not enough evidence, blah, blah, blah. We remove that one. So everybody should just try and clear up their name. So they were not trying to set VDM up, say, okay, the other evidence will you get to release us so that we'll figure and say, fight this case or you do this investigation, go ahead, pause the video and say, why lie? They're not born will tell me, say, my release the second evidence. That one for court. They tried, we know it was a setup, but they tried, tried, tried about VDM, holy ground. And thank God for the human rights activists, this lawyer that were with him and everything played out. Do you guys see the grand entries of uh, VDM with that native guy? Everybody just make it skipped out of it, you know. VDM coming out like this and going to the court, you know. It, it's really funny. And a lot of people are saying that VDM should be very careful. Me, I'm saying that, ah, hey, VDM, because God is with you, bro. A lot of Nigerians that you are fighting for are very ungrateful. They don't see it like you are doing it for them. Some people are just seeing it as a class chasing. But if they have issues, they will run to you on your DM. By the time you start fighting for them, some people will start saying, oh, VDN that, VDN this, VDN that. Anyway, this is where we're going to be ending the video. I want you guys to comment your thoughts in the comment section. What do you think about all of this? Are the honorable were trying to force VDM to release this evidence too? And what is your thought on the prison officials saying that, ah, they only suspend that for social media or they not suspend that for real life that is still doing his job. I want you guys to comment your thoughts about all of this. I will be waiting for you in the comment section. All right, I will be unboxing our YouTube award. <laughs> no, no, this video will be too long. Let me unbox it in the next video. I will just make another video right now with this same shit. And please subscribe. If you subscribe, turn on your notification bell so that you, you will see my YouTube award. Or, guys, you guys are wonderful. You are wonderful. Yeah, yeah. No, let me dust it in the next video.